Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. I hope you're all doing well. It's the first video for the channel in 2020. So, um, you know, welcome back. Um, as you can see at the beginning now, we are going to be doing warnings. Because that's the way we're going to try and protect ourselves from the whole copper thing. The kappa, copper, whatever it's called thing that's going through YouTube at the present. And... I'm going to start showing the links to our Instagram and Twitter pages. Because I haven't been doing that in the previous ones. I've just left them in the description. But they're up on the screen now. So I hope you all will go go to the Twitter and the Instagram and link to them. And I also hope that if you're not subscribed, you will subscribe to the channel. Because weekends on this channel now is sports. And our favourite sport on this channel is Blood Bowl. So, tonight's topic is one that I have asked the Blood Bowl community about their opinions on this. And uh, let's get into the topic and then we'll, we'll see my opinions. And here we are, guys. The first question I asked the Blood Bowl community in 2020 is, in your opinion... What is the worst positional in any Blood Bowl team? I was really surprised by the answers initially. The more I thought about it, the less I was surprised really. Because once you stop and think, everyone was spot on. And everyone had their opinion, at least like the death roller the just the linemen in general because they have no skills but that's why they're the cheapest people on your team uh, and, and stuff like that but these are the top three that I thought were interested so let's dive straight in and here is pick one which is the big daddy emo of emo elves the assassin right the assassin is costing us 90,000 gold and for that he has got movement 6, strength 3, agility 4 and armor value 7 which is worse than the lineman because you know they get armor value 8 runners and blitzers are yeah, they got the arm armor value seven, but they got that one extra movement. And the pair of them well I say the pair of them seem to be a better fit and well, better fit for points as well. Runners are ten thousand gold less. Blitters are ten gold more, but they do a lot more for the team. Now the skills they've got a shadowing and stab and I kind of agree with the community that stab is a very useless rule to be using, especially if you're in a league. Because any play that you do with a stab action doesn't count for star player points. And it's very situational, especially with high armor valued opponents. So if you're going to use it on you know anything that's on value seven and below well you may as well just run a block so you know it just se it seems to be a bit of a a nothing rule old stab that it's there but you're never going to use it and the only good skill i got is shadowing which is helps with the movement if a play if the opposing player tries to move away you add your movement plus 2d6 then you minus your movement and if that's under 7 you follow them if it's more than 7 you're kind of stuck where you are so it is situational but being at these movement 6 is probably going to pay off more often than not so it is a little bit of a a free movement he's, take, he's keeping a tackle zone on our player that's trying to dodge out but for 90,000, you've just got a 
basically lineman stats with a blitz action you're never going to use in stab and a very situational skill it's not it's not dodge it, it's not as useful as dodge it's not and i don't it's not guard it's not multiple block it's not um nerves of steel it's a bit of a waste in my opinion and when you've got a team full of emos emo elves you don't want someone that's trying to out emo the rest of the team so i don't I like my dark elves not as much as I like my halflings but yeah it's I have found four blitzers to be more useful than assassins and I found even running two blitzers two runners hell of a lot more useful than just running assassins and it's not a situational so yeah Assassin's the first on the uh, the pile of shit positioners. And off for the Assassin to get lonely in the next up is the Chameleon Skink, which I was surprised to see up because this is a new positioner. But people are already sick and tired of it. So, Chameleon Skink costs us 70,000, which is 10,000 more than a Skink Runner. So the Chameleon has got a movement of 7. Strength 2, Agility 3, Armor Value 7. And he's got the skills Dodge, Pass Block, Shadowing and Stunty. When we can pay that to the Skink Runner, who's got a, who's got a movement of 8, Strength 2, Agility 3, uh, he's got the Armor Value 7, and he only has Dodge and Stunty. But Dodge and Stunty is... All you really need on a skink. So they are, you know, they dodging out really, really easily. Thanks to Stunty. But for 10,000 10, more, you've got Shadowing, which is very situational. As we said, it's probably a lot easier with on a movement 7 than it is on a movement 6. But it all depends on how well you roll those 2d6. We've got um, pass block, which is you can move out of, out of sequence, but before an interception, so move your player if he can reach the intended target of the pass, so he can be there to intercept. This is I don't see this as 10,000 more. I would like to have seen seen this on 70 if you kept the movement 8 because movement 7 and you still got to try and dodge as well all right you can get there for that arm of our 7 is the most squishiest thing on that team and if you were putting yourself into a position where you were close to or in a tackle zone of another player that guy is going to get squished because I've been I've been in uh, games with the uh, lizardman and the first thing I have, I have done is taken out skinks because that is the running game that is the passing game out the window it's just hide from the sauruses because the sauruses armor value 9 strength 4 that's a tough tough nut to crack but they ain't passing they've got to try and pick up the ball and they've got to try and move so why would you want to put a skink in a position where he's going to be taken off the ball board really easily I don't understand that bit so according to uh, the Blood Bowl community he is the second to go on to the positional pile of shit so We've gone through two of them. We go into the, I want to say top three, but this is bottom three really when we're talking dog shit. So let's go check out the last guy. And here he is, guys. He's the last man standing in our carnival of Croxigo shit. It's the Goblin Hooligan. And our Hooligan cost us 
70,000, which is not a lot, I will give you. But for that, he's movement 6, strength 2, agility 3, armor value 7. Exactly the same as a regular goblin for 40,000. So you're not getting any for that 30,000 gold, you're not getting any extra stat upgrade. So bit of a waste there but when we check him check him out he has the right stuff and stunty so best thing about goblins is the right stuff and stunty because that means if you're a troll about that isn't hungry you're throwing this bastard down the road same reason i play my flings i like to launch him but fan favorite fan favorite to me is a waste of a skill I wouldn't I wouldn't give that when someone's leveling up I might when I run a league I might say oh you if your guys are the top touchdown scorer you can have it for the next season I could it's a throw away all the rule is is while he's on the pitch you get plus one fame for kickoff that's it doesn't it doesn't affect your winnings it's just while he's on the pitch, yeah, plus one fame for the kickoff result. For a skill, that's very situational, it, and it really, really doesn't affect the game. Like more skills do, like dump off, like uh, block, like dodge. You know, these are in-game effects. Fan favorite is nothing. It's it's not part of the game it's something you do before the game and to me that shouldn't be a rule that, it, it's useless it's, it, I, if i remember it rightly it used to be like i said you at the end of the at the end of a league you say how many how many touchdowns you scored oh i've scored 16 out of the whole league oh well that's most in the league you can get fan you can get fan favorite for next season there you go. It's just a very situational. And quite frankly, I would well, I wouldn't miss it if they dropped it out of uh, out of the rules for the next iteration of uh, Blood Bowl because it is well, it's kind of phrase dog shit. At the at the dog shit. The only redeeming factor for this boy is disturbing presence. And the rule of disturbing presence is, regardless of the nature of the mutation, player must subtract one from the d6 when it attempts to pass, intercept, or catch for each opposition uh, opposition player with disturbed presence that is within three squares of them, even if they're prone or stunned. But if this guy's been knocked down on his on his ass, Armor value seven is is not that much different to armor value six. It's, you know you're gonna get it quite easily, especially on a two. Well, you can only get it on a two d six, but it's very easy to get. So if he's if he's down, he's out. Because you know if you break his armor and you roll another seven, he's he's knocked out. He's I don't know. For that extra thirty, I don't think disturbing presence is. Is actually worth that much could have said 50,000 60,000 I would have said okay I'll give it to you but no I, I don't think fan favorite or disturbing presence warrants that price hike on just a regular goblin you may as well save save the money get a normal goblin and then get a uh, get a bribe or money towards a bribe you know when you're keeping the change it's Perhaps I'm being too hard. Perhaps I've been too hard on all these picks. But because it's a YouTube video, I have an open comment. You tell me in the comment section if I'm right, if I'm wrong, or who would you like to have seen on this list? Perhaps I can do a, you know, a second part to this question. Let me know in the comments down below. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children pretending to be of age, this is the end of the video. I hope you've enjoyed the first video back. I've just got into my creaky chair. 
thought I'd uh, do a quick video. Do you agree or disagree? Tell me in the comments down below. Is there something you've not really thought about? Have I missed uh, certain players that you would like to see? And we could do a part two. On the screen, we've got our Twitter and Instagram. I hope that you will follow us there. And in the future, we will be going back to doing Blood Bowl videos on the weekend. So stay tuned for them. If that is your bag, if not, we will be covering it AOS through the week. So, hopefully things are going to be different in 2020. We, we might see a bit of a change on the channel. You see where the, uh, the UAT accepts. Share us amongst family and friends and the people you dislike if you think I'm going to bore them. Any coverage is good coverage. If you're not a subscriber, please subscribe. That would mean so much to us. I will be updating our Teesprings account soon. And thank you from the channel. And I hope to see you again real soon. See you again, guys.